for joining me, Mika. Ah, uh, hi. Uh, thank you so much for invita- inviting me to your show. Oh, it's so I, wonderful I'm to have you. And uh, before, as people are joining the broadcast, uh, I want to show your beautiful video that you sent me, which introduces the kind of work that you're doing. So is it okay to play your video now? Oh, certainly, yeah. Okay. Please enjoy, and we will be right back. I am Mika Horie from Ishikawa, Japan. To me, art can be a way to live. Through art, I can explore the world and discover different viewpoints, concepts, colors, shapes, and textures from other artists. I spend most of my creative time outside, drawing the harvest of gumpy trees in the mountain, paper making, and cyanotype printing. I notice the sound of floating water, birds singing, the wind, the smells of trees and flowers in my garden and neighborhood. If I rip up and discard my artwork outside, everything will return to nature. It is 100% sustainable. All right, with that video, Perfect introduction to the wonderful work that you're doing, Mika. Thank you so Mm -hmm. much for joining from Yamanaka Ishikawa today. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) Uh, Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. If you have a question or comment, as usual, please write them below, and we'll try to add them in. We're talking to an artist, uh, Mika Horie, who lives in Yamanaka in Ishikawa Prefecture originally from Kyoto today. Uh, Thank you so much for joining this series and telling us about your interesting art. I think the ending of your video is my favorite part, of course, because Mm. I'm so passionate about sustainability. Mm. So I love when you say it's 100% sustainable. Mm. So from picking the weeds Mm -hmm. that you make the paper from to the Mm. end process, of putting mm-hmm. the waste back into the ground, mm-hmm. it's all natural. There's nothing bad going into the environment or going into mm-hmm. you. So it's like a perfect circular process. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about your background. How did you get interested in mm-hmm. art 
as a as mm -hmm. a child? Were you an mm -hmm. artist as a child? Well, actually, I I was, uh, but but I I can't. Yeah, it's hard to say when my career started. But um, the first uh, my interest was uh, happened when I was around three, just three years old. Um, I have two sisters, two elder sisters. I'm the youngest, and my uh, both of my sisters uh, enjoyed like uh, illustration, drawing. Like, um, like reading manga and uh, um, do drawing the part of like their favorite like uh, beautiful girls uh, at yeah comic on comic manga and uh, I was watching and uh, how that looked uh, so interesting fun I I just really wanted to try something like to draw on paper. And then uh, my mother, uh, like, also um, conscious about like uh, recycling, and also this, uh, my family uh, uh, reads a newspaper every every day and uh, um, buy newspaper um, every day, uh, local newspaper. And, um, there's so many like advertisement like supermarket and. Uh, um architects like clothing store and the uh, shopping mall and uh, uh every day uh, my family get like dozens of uh, like uh like advertisement that's all printed by paper and on trash it's going to trash and then my mother uh collected all um paper that the front is an advertisement and then the other side is a blank and then uh, my mother piling like the um, the, and in the side uh, room and the, on the table and then I I found the paper blank paper many blank papers and then I started to draw something I whatever I I got interest like pretty girl flowers and uh, uh, like uh, um, one like moment of manga like whatever I. I started to draw like every day. I I draw um, more than like five ten like illustration drawings. Um, uh, that I think that's the beginning of like something I I wanted to express on paper. And, and then my dream was like becoming clear. Like I wanted to be something like maybe painter or illustrator or a comic artist like that uh, I had uh, when I was at uh, primary school, elementary school, primary school and, uh, and junior high school like when I was teenager. But, um, but I, I kept drawing something on paper um, and then um, when I was um, 16, 17, 18, like when I was a high school student, I took a class, like part-time class to uh, get the technique of a um, manga artist, comic artist. Uh, but I, through the process of uh, like, uh, comic making process, I found that so many process I I have to stay inside the room and then thinking about idea of story and thinking about uh, what character I need to draw and then that's the job that I have to stay inside and then uh, there's no time to go outside, go walk. And then I I thought um, that I I sure that not likely to be my my job. Like I wanted to go outside. I wanted to go 
to see beautiful sunshine and uh, um, go mountains, nature. Like I wanted to have uh, something, um, activity, some activities um, outside and daytime. So I, I got back to like my like starting point uh, when I was uh, 17 years old and then uh, I gave up to study about uh, manga comic writing techniques and then started to go uh, for wider variation of a career about like paper-based artist and then I decided to enter art university that's uh, uh, near uh, my home in Kyoto uh, called Kyoto University of Art and Design and uh, I took um, information design course. There's many like um, uh, contents included like photography, a sculpture study and illustration study and uh, computer work and web design study. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ah, yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Before that, I that before I start talking about like uh, my experience in the UK, I just I uh, want to talk that uh, the turning point of uh, like uh, well, when I got actually got interest about washi paper that's uh, the, during uh, my study in Kyoto, Kyoto University um, Art and Design um, that uh, there's a uh, like, uh, study of uh, bookmaking I I took uh, photography and then uh, make to made my own photo book as like uh, as an artist experience. Uh, then I I was thinking uh, about the materials, the paper, and then I visited uh, many paper shops in Kyoto and Osaka near my house and the study about paper. Um, then I enjoyed uh, studying many different texture of paper. And then um, one day I reached a uh, Japanese paper shop in Kyoto, and then I found a uh, uh, beautiful washi paper, and then they said um, inkjet uh, use. Uh, so I Back then, I had no idea about Japanese paper, and then I was surprised, and I didn't know um, uh, we can use uh, Japanese paper for inkjet printing. So I, I got interest to use Japanese paper for my first, very first uh, photo book. Um, and then, actually, I, I brought that, my first photo book. I'm going to show you a little bit. Like, this are, um, it's hard to uh, explain the texture, but it's something like, we, we can, maybe we can feel the sound. The texture is so soft and delicate. And then it's a black and white image. Uh, but there is, not only black and white uh, colors on the surface of paper, there's so many subtle, delicate gradations of like uh, light gray, warm gray, and uh, um, white, whitish. So I, the moment I, I printed out my image on paper and I fell in love the texture of uh, Japanese paper, and I really enjoyed uh, bookmaking with uh, Japanese paper. Uh, that uh, 
like my uh like the beginning of my career of like to get interest about my paper. I I love that story and I I love the story where you you were asking about the paper at the paper shop and you ask who made it because mm -hmm. nobody signs the washi paper mm -hmm. but it's so beautifully made and that really surprised you mm -hmm. that the artist did not sign it and, no. and you were thinking maybe if i made that i would sign it right <laughs> Like, yeah. it takes such a long time and it's so beautiful. That's such a good point. Yeah. I've never thought about yeah. that. Yeah, I, yeah. This, uh, yeah. Yeah, after I got in first interest about learning Jap Japanese paper, I I visited so many Japanese paper shops uh, in Kansai area, Kyoto, Osaka, Kobe, Nara, and then yeah, I, of course, I, uh, I've i asked the shop staff, shop owner, uh, who made the paper. And well, they, their answer is, they said only the region. For example, uh, the washi paper are made in Shikoku area and uh, Hokuriku area, and Echizen village. Um, they didn't uh, tell me any like particular person, like uh, the name of the artisans. So I was wondering, I it's so beautiful and, uh, and it it has some sign. So that's uh, like like I I started to think about what the position uh, of pa Japanese paper in Japan. Yeah, and the value that mm -hmm. often the artist has no credit. Isn't that mm -hmm. amazing, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm showing some of your photos now of you collecting the gampi, the gampi mm -hmm. tree fibers. And it's so difficult. Why did you choose the gampi material? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us the story? Sure. Uh, I, yeah. So, like, when I I was visiting uh, many paper shops, and uh, also uh, at that same time, I, I started to visit many um, museums to see uh, artists' artworks on paper, Japanese paper. And then um, one of my favorite photographer, uh, uh, he used uh, Japanese paper, very thin, like extra thin uh, Japanese paper. Like it's easy to see through the all beautiful natural writing if we set artwork like near the window, and then uh, at the same time that uh, his creation of an uh, image of um, nature that I think in Shiga landscape and uh, uh, island, Iceland, like dynamic wave and uh, mountain rocks, and that's the combination of natural writing and we see through natural writing and uh, that image of uh, nature that uh, was really shocking to see and uh, that I I studied about his work and there's a caption like the introduction the materials and uh, the uh, introduction said that's uh, printed on Gumpy paper. And then, ah, oh, okay, that's, I wanted to try. <laughs> and, then, um, and then, purely by chance, um, I found a place that, uh, that 
the photographer uh, used uh, uh, Gumpy paper and uh, at, uh, he bought a sh uh, Gumpy paper at paper shop in Osaka, uh, central Osaka. And then I, I reached the shop, the same shop by chance. And then I started to ask the shop owner about more about Gumpy paper. And uh, then after that, um, I, I think I, I confirmed myself that, okay, I, I, I go for more about uh, Gumpy paper. My concentration is we go for uh, Gumpy paper. I many paper, all Japanese paper, so beautiful. I like all all of them. But for my artwork is, I I have I I been work as a photographer. Um, so for photo printing, right? I would I thought I would need um dense and uh, thin and uh, uh, make um subtle many gradations and then after I'm I showed uh, my direction for Gumpy paper I I found a place at uh, artisan's place in Shiga it's between it's called Otsu um, it's it's near the border of um, Kyoto and Shiga Prefecture, and uh, the artisans are focused on just gumpy paper making. That sounded very interesting to me. Yeah, so, and then I I I went to the uh, to see the artisans, meet artisans, and see the uh, gumpy paper, and then. There's so many different thickness of uh, and the different texture of gumpy papers, also color differences. And uh, just I, I was being like a child, like so much treasure for like me and uh, to learn to many, so many things about Jap only gumpy papers. And then I, I was excited, too excited, and then then somehow, but uh, still, I I was I was uh, I got the question, and there's no sign on the paper. So, and then I see like if I see um, hundreds of gumpy paper, it looks the same, but it's so beautiful. And then it's all handmade. And then, and uh, if it's the same thickness, and then each paper has slightly, slightly different, and uh, uh, subtle um, like texture difference. So I I got an idea suddenly. Uh, maybe I can make my own gumpy paper if I trained the skills and got a technique, and then. First, I think I was brave the moment. I just uh, was curious about and then asked the um, artisan and uh, well, it's if it's possible to study and learn uh, the process of gumpy paper making. And then the artisan, he said, oh, yes. And then and then suddenly, okay, come, come to my, come to my um, studio tomorrow morning. And then, and then next day, um, just I, I started to uh, studying about gumpy paper making. How long did it take you to learn the process? Did it take a long time to learn how to do it? Yeah, I. It's hard to say. It's 
long time or short time. Uh, for about first three months, I I've practiced very basic skills about making very flat seat. The uh, most important uh, technique <clears throat> to make um, beautiful paper. There's so many processes. Uh, the final process, uh, beautiful surface, making beautiful surface, su surface is very important. And then... Uh, but you, I think it's you or maybe in Hannah Kirshner's book, uh, talking about you pound it out, you make the pulp. Mm -hmm. um, you want to mm -hmm. make it smooth, but not too smooth mm -hmm. because the little bits of bumpiness or the little mm -hmm. bit of fiber that you mm -hmm. can see makes mm -hmm. the washi paper so unique and so beautiful, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you can see the variation in the paper. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, yeah, the technique uh yeah i've learned so many skills like like for example the, the first technique i got like how to scoop and uh, how to put the fiber on the screen evenly that's the difficult part and then um the artisan i got uh, many advices from the artisans i really appreciated that um advices and the, the teaching um and then uh, the process, uh, I found that, uh, that uh, most of the processes that uh, like machine made nowadays, uh, like for example, like making pulp, uh, like ancient time, like people like pound on a very hard surface. Uh, and the crust of fiber by hand. Um, but now it's, I think, over 80% of uh, paper mills use a big machine, like chopping, cutting, and pounding by electric like machine. And then that's, of course, that is very quick and uh, easy and uh, no energy and uh, but the, when I see the fiber that's machine made fiber it's too smooth and then um, that's something I I feel I felt the gap something I wanted to reach like for my creation and the uh, artisan made that use machines um so i i i started to learn and what ancient people ancestor did for like paper making in nara period like heian period and the edo period and then i discovered it's it's all by hand because there's no electric so, uh, and uh, after I learned about like all handmade process, I really wanted to try, and uh, and also I wanted to know how hard was it. It it was at uh, as a at long long time ago to connect to the very beginning of the history of a Japanese paper. Uh, I love that. I, whenever I read your Instagram or your Facebook or about your exhibition or about how you got started as an artist, one thing that comes up again and again is your curiosity. I love that curiosity that you have, which drives your passion, right? It's yeah. wonderful. Like uh, even discovering how to make washi paper from Gampi. Like, how is that made? Who made it? Where did they make it? I want to learn how to do it, right? That curiosity is, is so important for sustainability, but also really important for a happy life. So it's so nice to hear someone who's so curious and then goes and discovers how to do something and then teaches others. 
So you've also done workshops, right? Mm, yeah. Um, like um, the beginning of like for, uh, my workshop, I I was thinking what process I I have to teach for guests visitors, but I uh, now I know all the process of paper making because I I harvest or gumpy trees these these materials uh, by myself and uh, I I know how the tree looks like and uh, the um, how to strip the bark and uh, how to how to pound a bark and uh, how to scoop the fibers and uh, uh, and uh, I use um, spring fresh spring water uh, for only for my paper making. Uh, lucky me, the uh, beautiful uh, stream is is next to my studio, and then uh, behind my studio is just a mountain. So it's pure, clean, uh, um, natural water and includes uh, natural minerals. Then I I wanted to offer all the process, all the experience that the same as my everyday life, my everyday creation. Then I I started to plan like like to show all the processes like and offer all experiences um, in ninety minutes. Like a minute, it's it's fast. Intense, but, That's quite yeah. fast, right? Yeah, yeah. But I I really wanted to put all like uh, like. like my feeling and stay in nature and touching nature all the time during the workshop. So it's it's busy. I, I think it's busy processes. Many guests uh, always have lots of questions. Did, um, does it does it help you understand the process better, or uh, does teaching sometimes helps us? Uh, think about it in a new way. Maybe your guest had an interesting question and then it sparked a new idea, right? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Uh, most of my visitors are from outside of Japan. And then um, they have own like uh, imagination and experience about uh, paper, like any papers, like handmade paper in like their region and uh, um, the, the many questions I've got from them, like uh, how many papers can make from these old fibers and uh, uh, how to harvest and uh, uh, how how we should to uh, uh, peel, peel that uh, like strip the fibers and uh, uh, what the concept and uh, but uh, every single question is is work for like uh, thinking seriously about what what I like unconsciously think, do uh, for paper making. That's great, and of course you're not only making paper. You have another process after the paper is made. Um, can you tell us about your printing? Your, mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? Cyanotype? Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, I use a uh, cyanotype technique. Uh, that's uh, not a popular technique anymore. Uh, it's originally... Uh, uh, discovered in England in 18th century in the using UV light for transfer and the exposure. But UV light means um, sunlight, uh, and use, I use sunshine for printing, and and I I took. 
landscape mainly, and I work um, uh, shooting photos and about landscape images. That's uh, because I my current life is surrounded or beautiful nature. It's I I live in Yamanaka Onsen in Kaga um, Ishika Prefecture and. Uh, it's Yamanaka means mid of a mountain. So I'm surrounded by wild flowers, wild trees, and beautiful airs. And every day I discover something new in nature. And I go outside with my camera, holding my camera and uh, photo shooting, do photo shooting. And then if I got very many strong imagination, and then uh, decide uh, what image I want to print as my artwork. And then I make uh, uh, many sizes of negative image from my um, original image, and then uh, make contact print uh, on my uh, Japanese paper, Gumpy paper, and use uh, natural sunlight only. Like how to do is um, prepare my Gumpy paper and then uh, prepare a black, a negative black and white image and put uh, together and then clip and then go outside my garden and then wait for about 30 minutes. Um, sometimes more than 30 minutes. It depends on um, it, weather. It's a very blue color. Mm -hmm. Is it, are you using indigo dye? Uh, Isome uh, or not Isome? It looks like Isome because it's such a blue color. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. the natural process, is it? <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, every day, yeah, many people think it's indigo, but it's, it's uh, not indigo. It's all like traditional um, cyanotype printing. Like, uh, it's, I call it, it's part of chemicals, but it's very safe. It's non-toxic. It's very safe, safest chemicals in uh, photographic world. Uh, it's, it's safe to touch. And uh, uh, it's it's easy to also I have sometimes I have silent type printing workshop with kids and then it's safe for everybody. Um, and then I I put apply yeah I forgot to tell you that uh, apply the um, that's part of iron salt I could say uh, uh, what I use is. Um, iron salt uh, to apply iron salt on paper and then uh, put my negative image and then uh, go outside to have sunlight and then uh, the uh, the sunlight transfers all images uh, very slowly slowly it's it's slow process but it make beautiful blue gradations and then and um, also I enjoy like every day uh, makes different gradation tones of blue because every day sunlight, the condition of sunlight changes. And then also winter time it's in Ishikawa is very gloomy and so many snowy days and rainy days. Uh, uh, the strongness of um, UV light is very uh, different from uh, summer, strong summer uh, sunshine. So summertime, it get very deep, strong, uh, beautiful indigo-like blue. And then winter time, I see uh, delicate, like light blue tone. I really enjoy that. Like, I follow all the situation of everyday nature and uh, uh, um, condition of sunshine. Like I, I try like farming because um, sunny day, I work very hard 
uh, for printing, also paper making and photo shooting. And then、uh, rainy days, I, I work inside for like, stripping the bark, like prepare for paper making or outdoor、uh, activities. So, yeah, like a farmer, you decide what you're going to do based on the weather, and you、yeah. always have something to do, right? Inside、yeah. or outside.、Yeah. Uh, Limousine has a question from YouTube. Thanks for joining. Cool. Do you do school workshops in your area? So, the photos I'm putting now,、um, it looks like you're doing workshops with kids and families, and maybe not with the camera, not with the negatives, but putting. Vegetables or leaves or different things on?、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is, is that the workshop for kids? You would do different vegetables or leaves? Yeah.、Uh, every summer,、uh, there's、um, Obon season. Like,、um, especially, especially there's、um, 22nd of August. He's a、uh, It's disobon for kids, uh, uh, kids' obon holiday、um, to pray for、um, kids' ancestors and、uh, at the、um, temple. And then、uh, I, I try to teach a、uh, cyan type uh, uh, printing workshop. Uh, with like an familiar motif, like,、uh, vegetable, part of vegetable scraps. And、uh, that the purpose is、uh, try to create something by hand、uh, without、um, smartphones, digital、um, cameras. For example, Uh, we all interest in like, shooting, photo, to shoot,、uh, shooting photo for like, delicious meals, food, like bento boxes. But for like,、um, the, we, we say, like, itadakimasu for appreciation for food. But before that, like,、uh, we all prepare. And smartphones and camera to do like, for,、uh, like to get a beautiful photo of food.、Uh, I, I think I, I can teach something different from like uh, sh- uh, taking photo by smartphones and digital tools.、Um, instead of using the digital tools,、uh, put like vegetable scraps on paper. Japanese paper, and then, uh, uh, and then uh, use the technique, cyanotype technique, and then uh, uh, the result, as a result, we see that beautiful silhouette of vegetable scraps and、uh, tomato shapes and the beautiful、um, saku shapes, at all like a part of nature.、And, Yeah. And then、yeah. it looked like you also did a workshop at the seaside. So,、mm-hmm. incorporating、uh, using the ocean as a、mm-hmm. theme that、mm-hmm. also looked really nice. Ah, thank you. That's for,、like, for open to everybody, not for, only for、uh, kids. That's uh, like, uh, I, invited, I was invited to、uh, Miyazaki Prefecture. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, for workshop, my workshop. And then I, my original plan was doing something, the same thing as like,、uh, like picking some vegetables or flower or、um, in like、mm, garden or park. But when I、um, So, the location is a n o thousand point of a, like, Miyazaki Prefecture. It's like ocean, pure blue, and the blue sky. And the, I 
I got、um, inspiration、uh, from the sea, and then I changed my mind, and then I started to thinking about we can do something, the workshop using the wat- beautiful water and the sea water. It looks, it looks beautiful. Great idea.、Uh, Limousine says, All right, they're on holiday. Great initiative. I like it. It's great to avoid the digital form. Refreshing. And、um, I showed a picture as well with you and your camera. So even when you use the camera, you're using such an old style camera. It's, a bit, it's not like you can see it right away, it's not like a smartphone, right? So,、yeah. you're using the very long, more creative process and something very different from what we normally use now.、Um, I love that. You've also got such beautiful collaboration work that you've been doing.、Um, I'm showing now the lanterns that you made and different collaborative projects. Can you talk about that a little bit?、Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, well, uh... I got、uh, many collaborations.、Um, I, all collaborations I really uh, did, uh, enjoyed.、Uh, for example,、um, uh, the collabor- one collaboration I did、uh, with a、uh, local、um, ryokan, it's a Japanese style inn,、um, very small family owned. Um, um, Ryukan. They, um, they asked me to、uh, make partitions、uh, with my artwork because,、um, uh, the, as I explained,、uh, the uh, paper is com- Japanese paper is、uh, see through、um, to enjoy natural writing. And,、uh, and the combination of、um, like, uh, uh, surface,、uh, the printing surface. And、uh, I made、um, square shaped、um, kind of abstract、um, print uh, for um, think, uh, connect to the nature and the feeling about. Like, uh, peaceful and meditative,、uh, like, to、uh, very quiet inside of Ryokan.、Uh, that place is、um, surrounded by deep forest and、uh, gosh. And、uh, I was thinking about what image I, I can print to collaborate, collaborate with them. And then Yeah, yeah, thank you.、Um, and then、uh, another collaboration is at, like, with a、um, tea factory, a local tea factory ka- called Kagabocha Marhachi Seicha.、Um, they, they make beautiful、um, hoji cha,、uh, uh, it's a very great process, and、uh, they Wanted to make、uh, hojicha tea room as specialized、uh, only hojicha, caffeine free and roasted、uh, tea, tea room. And then、uh, they asked me to have like、um, uh, to connect the very beginning of、uh, their、uh, history.、Uh, Of their factory location.、Uh, the factory location was、uh, near river and、uh, near mountain.、Um, the, the first generation, the owner, was really enjoyed、uh, like, um, watching only mountains from the factory. So, did, you, was... did you use the tea leaves? As your motif in your design? Because everything's、oh. about hojicha,、mm-hmm. about the tea. So, did you、uh-huh. use the tea leaf?、Uh, no, I, I was thinking that、uh, using tea leaves. But I, when I was 
uh, when I had a meeting with the um, owner, um, this, he is a um, fourth, fourth generation now, and then uh, they they um, wanted to show their visitors about the uh, philosophy of uh, uh, first generations, the very beginning of like very strong, passionate about uh, the uh, building Sorry. factories. Mm -hmm. And then um, they set one mountain in local mountains uh, called Kurakakiyama Mountain. Um, then, so I decided to uh, take photos of uh, the mountain and uh, it's um, from the same location as the first generations, the owner, uh, owner saw a uh, long, long time ago, and then connect to that um, uh, current location and uh, current view and uh, the view uh, from long, long time ago. And uh, I printed only the mountain and with like few crowd to make uh, like only gradations of mountain and the sky. And then I I showed like my sample to the current owner, and then they, he he loved it, and all the staff loved it. And then I decided to use image of that uh, local mountain uh, landscape. Sorry, all of your work is so beautiful, and it's amazingly subtle. Like it's a photograph, but it, you sometimes don't see the photograph because you just see the beautiful paper and you see the texture and then it's very subtle. You notice, is it a painting? Uh, is it, it's too detailed for a painting. Is it a photograph? It makes you ask many questions as the viewer. It's, it's wonderful. You're so talented. I love it. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Um, I also love the lanterns, the paper lanterns mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. collaboration that you did is so beautiful and so delicate. All oh, of the paper you. lanterns. Yeah, gorgeous. Thank you. Was that also the washi paper or was that just the printing? Ah, that's um, oh, Japanese paper and uh, that's a uh, uh, first collaboration of with um, the one of the oldest Japanese paper shop in Kyoto. Nice. Um, that uh, they wanted to have uh, like my image on their own paper. So, uh, of they they own many beautiful Japanese papers and then. Actually, I, I, I was dreaming to collaborate something with the paper shop, so I was very honored. And, uh, and then we are like brainstorming and uh, meeting and uh, um, what the motif uh, uh, is suitable to uh, put their paper and make lantern and then uh, now we are like uh, um, curious about Japanese like preserved food like dried something um, like we in in Japan we have many like preserving way of like food and uh, <clears throat> so that the moment we decided to use um, dried food for my motif. And uh, we, that was fun to think about like designs with uh, Japanese food, like 
uh, kombu, like seaweed, and uh, dried sh mini shrimps, and uh, uh, fu, cold fu, like donut shaped, like uh, dried gluten for that's ingredient for miso soup. Um, I tried uh, to make like com composition of um, like uh, of like surface with many preserved dried food. That was very interesting and uh, experience. Fantastic. And talking about the future, um, you have had exhibitions in Belgium and other countries before. Um, in the future, would you like to travel more and do more international exhibitions? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, I really having fun to go outside to do many cultural exchanges to talk to me to many um, people who have different background and to discover um, photographers and uh, have different philosophies and different use using different techniques. Uh, that's all I'm um, encouraging uh, my creations and uh, that's uh, Every time I go abroad and uh, see my exhibitions or my friends' exhibitions um, uh, outside of Japan, I got so many inspirations. Uh, it's all wonderful and magical experience. And then, then after that, I after I got back to Yamanaka Onsen, my studio, and then. Um, I got more like energy to go uh, think about uh, what to print, what to do, photo shoot, and uh, that um, what think about uh, my paper making in the future. Uh, inspiration from other artists as well mm -hmm. as a different yeah. perspective from people viewing mm -hmm. your work and their feedback or comments maybe also helps you think about what you want to do next, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. I really enjoy that, uh, like, uh, exchange, um, exchanging um, different thought, uh, different ideas, and, uh, and uh, make new friends outside of Japan, and share, also um, share my my philosophy and my thinking and my process of creations. That's wonderful. Well, I hope you have a chance to travel again sometime soon after coronavirus and have those wonderful mm -hmm. experiences mm -hmm. and be able to share your artwork because it's so valuable and so wonderful. I'm sure there's a lot of people around Japan and around the world who would love to see your artwork and take your workshop. They look so fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I would love to try myself from harvesting the gumpy weeds and peeling them. And you said it takes about eight months. You have to dry the gumpy. Is that right? Uh -huh. Oh, well, it depends that uh, humidity. So right. uh, it, it's hard to tell how long we need to dry. But any like, but. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm happy to Im yeah, invite you I anytime. I would love to try, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but then maybe I can do the 90-minute process with you after you mm -hmm. prepare everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, my dream is to come and live with you for two months and learn the process and learn how to do everything. That would be great as well. <laughs> yeah, that sounds wonderful. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, um, yeah, you're yeah, always yeah, welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, I want to show the video that we showed at the beginning. I want to show at the end mm -hmm. to give people the idea of the process mm -hmm. once again. Mm -hmm. It's such a beautiful circular process which does not harm the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, everything can start from nature, go back to nature. It's so beautiful. Um, so I'd like to leave our audience with that wonderful video. Thank you so much, Mika, for joining today and sharing all of your insights and keep up the good work.
Thank you so much. Pleasure to talking with you, and I really enjoyed this conversation very much. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for watching and enjoy Mika's video as we leave you, and join us again tomorrow at 10 a.m. with a new talk、uh, with Chelsea about her book about feminism and female activism. In Japan. So we'll be talking about this at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. So please join us again. I'll leave you with Mika's lovely video. Thank you so much, Mika. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am Mika Horie from Ishikawa, Japan. To me, art can be a way to live. Through art, I can explore the world and discover different viewpoints, concepts, colors, shapes, and textures from other artists. I spend most of my creative time outside, during the harvest of gumpy trees in the mountain, paper making, and cyanotype printing. I notice the sound of floating water, birds singing, the wind, the smells of trees and flowers in my garden and neighborhood. If I rip up and discard my artwork outside, everything will return to nature. It is 100% sustainable.